this video, we'll go over how to set up the alarm routing on AKSM880A. To begin, press on the menu button, go to configuration, go to the alarms, go to alarm routing, and here you'll be able to see some of the components that are listed. Uh, first five are the five external relays that you can assign for each of the action number. And what the action number is, is, is the grouping of an alarm. So for example, uh, in your controller, uh, you get to choose which action number you want to assign for any alarm. And so you may choose to have all the refrigeration alarms to be an action number one, all the H, uh, HVAC alarms to be action number two, all the lighting alarms to be uh, action number three. Uh, to enable those, you simply need to go to details. And then for each of the action number, you can choose enabled, day, or night. Enable will enable it for the whole duration of the controller being online. Um, day will be just for the daytime and night for the nighttime. Uh, for this purpose, let's choose enabled. You also get to choose the delay units stop method and a unit address and you can see the stop method could be clear um, time acknowledged and so on now once you have enabled the relay you can head over to the relay section and you will notice that the alarm relay has been generated um, now you get to assign the address here and also the type, whether it be normally open or normally closed. So anytime there is an alarm for your action number one, then it will generate the relay that's been just created. Let's remove this for a second. Now, in addition to that, you also have the internal relay, and the difference between the two is that this one, when you enable the action number, it does not generate the relays at the relay section. Let's give it a second. Yep, there we go. And the reason being is that you're not using the external relay that's located at the extension module. Uh, but rather is going to be a relay that's tied into your board uh, for your system manager. So when you open up the system manager, um, there should be an internal relay that you should be able to use. Now, um, moving on, we have the front LED, which will be by default um, enabled for all the action numbers. Uh, so anytime you have an alarm, your front LED will be energized. You also have an option to put in the buzzer. So the same idea, you go into the details and you can enable whichever action number you want for your buzzer to be activated. Lastly, you have four networks that you can use. When you go into the details, um, you get to choose whichever action number you want. And let's just say we enable action number one. And now what happens is anytime you have an alarm in your action number one, it will go to the network connection that you have assigned. Uh, for this purpose, I have the email set up, uh, but you get to choose email, remote, or XML. The most common one is the email. Um, in the email section, you just need to make sure that you have the, um, the email server type correctly send to email, reply to email, and then you would have to have the schedule. And for this one, I just chose a standard. And so assuming that your network connections are set up properly, uh, what it will do is anytime there's an alarm, it'll be sent to this network. And in this case, it will be an email. So when we go back, you have an option to choose up to four and you get to choose whichever action number up to eight that you would like to assign. And similar to before, you get to choose the delays 
unit step. And also another option that pops up is send alarms when cleared. You get to choose yes or no. And lastly, you have an option here which says send critical alarms every 60 minutes or send severe alarms every 1440 minutes. You get to choose whichever you want and you can see here the minimum will be one minute and maximum will be 1440.